in history. And they didn't know what to do with me. They're like, what, master's degree? Okay, we'll give you the degree, but you, everybody goes for the PhD. And so me, I, we don't, I said, well, what should I do with this degree? And they're like, we don't know. <laughs> Well, that's not very reassuring, <laughs> I can tell you. My wife is not reassured either. I think we got married that year. Uh, and uh, they were like, well, maybe you can be like a trainer for managers at Wendy's or something. I was like, what? <laughs> what? And I like, not like flipping burgers, but you know, like a trainer, because with their headquarters was there. I said, well, I don't really want to do that. I like history. I don't really want to be a trainer at Wendy's. So, Got my degree, and they literally never gave me any advice. And so I was a substitute teacher because I said, I, I know I, I want to be a teacher. I figured that out. And I had this master's degree, and so I started substitute teaching, making like at least $55 a day, just racking in the money, called like once every two weeks. So I was really raking in the dough on that one. Uh, although it was more lucrative than writing books, I can tell you that. Uh, so, <laughs> but. Um, so I, got, I started teaching, and I stumbled into like a, a, a part-time job teaching gig, and then I got a, then I, you know, especially with social studies English teachers, this is a lot of them out there, right? If you're a math or science teacher, you could have got a job like that, and that's still true today. But, you know, social studies teachers, history teachers, kind of a dime a dozen, and so I, you know, it took a couple years to break my way in, but I finally got my job, and I loved it. And I loved working with the students, uh, even the ones like Hannah. So I'm gonna, I am going to pick on you the entire lecture. <laughs> okay, so just like I just should bring back good memories, right? Well, good memories for me. So, um, but, um, and I thought I was pretty good at it, right? I was confident that I was doing a good job and, and really loved teaching. I was at this small private school in Ohio. There were about 12 students per grade level. I mean, it was really small, but, you know, I taught these students six or seven times. At a certain point, I was like, guys, I have n literally nothing else to teach you. Uh, and they kept asking me for all these electives, and, and I kept uh, teaching like constitutional law and history of the 1960s and economics and history of warfare and all these cool classes. And then I just had no more material. I was just done. Uh, but, I, you know, I think they learned a lot. Uh, and I was really proud of what I did. I love being a teacher. Um, still do, really. Um, and I always said, I said, you know, guys, I love teaching. And, and I was like 28, 30, you know, uh, kind of young. Uh, well, old to you guys. But, um, you know, I said, guys, I love teaching. I, I'm just going to teach her for 40 years and then fade into the woodwork. One day I'll, you'll come in. I just won't be here. And <laughs> there'll just be a, a tweed jacket sitting by my <laughs> desk. And that'll be your last memory of me. Uh, so. Uh, and I said that, uh, and I also was writing some book reviews and that kind of things, just, you know, 500,000 word kind of essays. Uh, and I said, I, I am never going to write anything larger than a book review. I don't like writing. I don't like research. I love teaching. I love reading books. I love prepping for school. I love helping students learn how to write better and articulate their ideas, but I, I kind of don't like writing. As you can see already, God has kind of a sense of humor with my life, okay? Uh, I would say he has a plan for me, he just hasn't shared any of the details with me yet. So it kind of makes things a little hard for me. So I, uh, my wife wanted to move down south, so we, we ended, I ended up getting a job uh, at the competitor school to Peninsula Catholic, Hampton Ridge Academy. Uh, and I taught there for a couple years. And we were talking about never writing again. Well, I, decided, I think I had read like, you know, I've read a lot of books, you know, a couple thousand books or whatever. And so I, after a certain point, you get something, you're like, I could do that. And so I got this writer's bug, and I really wish I hadn't, but, but I got this writer's bug, and I really felt like I had needed to, to start writing and saying something. And so I started it during the summer, and I got a lot of time. I started writing something. It was just, oh, it was horrible. I, I think I've deleted it. I'm glad I did. I'm glad it was like, you know, you can't even find a copy of it on, online, right? Nothing's ever erased online or whatever. I'm glad I never sent it out there. You can't find it anywhere. It was a horrible. It was my first time. It, it was just, I think something on the Constitutional Convention. It was just bad. But I kept, I was, I was continuing to teach, uh, and, you know, we had two little kids, and I needed a salary, and my wife was a stay-at-home mom, and so, you know, I needed to keep teaching and trying to write at the same time, and I would write during breaks, and winter break, and summer break, and spring break, and any time I could. 
and, you know, late at night, that kind of thing, for a couple of hours after I'd done my teaching stuff and all that, put the kids to bed. So, so I was writing, and I stumbled across this idea of the relationship of George Washington and Alexander Hamilton. And I thought it was a really cool idea, and, you know, their relationship was really central to the founding of America, and so I started writing this book, and it took probably about a year and a half. And so I started writing it, and, and in the end produced a final manuscript. I was like, well, let me start sending this out to publishers. And I found out pretty quickly you need an agent to get to the big New York publishers. But the agent, you know, I kept sending out to agents and kept getting all these rejections. And, you know, if you want to be a writer, you got, you know, it's like an uh, artist, you know, any kind of music, you, you got to be ready for, like, criticism, for rejection. I sent it out, I got a lot of rejection letters, some people just didn't even bother responding. I was like, well, how am I supposed to get to the publishers if I can't get an agent, all right? It's kind of like getting your first job. You guys are all going to find this out depending, well, it depends on how long you'll be here if you're on the six-year plan or the four-year <laughs> plan or whatever. Hopefully the four-year plan and then maybe some graduate school. But, you know, you'll find out that no one's going to hire you because you don't have any experience. Well, how am I supposed to get experience if you don't hire me, right? It's kind of that catch-22 of being a, a young college graduate, right? Uh, and so... I was sending it out, got a lot of rejection. I said, I'm not going to let that stop me. I'm going to be the next David McCullough, the next you know, big historian, the next best-selling writer. Every writer thinks that. Uh, and, yeah, you're, you're laughing. I wasn't laughing. Uh, so I <laughs> couldn't get an agent. I was sending it out, though. Uh, and finally, was sort of reached a point where I was like, well, look, I, I'm done sending this out. Let me go on to other projects, and, and I'll just keep teaching. And I... I had heard about this hurricane that hit during the American Revolution back in 1776, I thought. Uh, somebody just mentioned it in passing. I think it was on C-SPAN's book TV. I used to watch that and all the author talks and, and, and all that. And, and now I've been on it a couple times. But uh, I, uh, somebody mentioned the hurricane, but I, I put it on a three by five card and I follow. I was like, this is a great story to kind of share with the students because I like telling stories and bringing history alive. I'm not always successful, right? But I try. I really, did I try? Thank you, thank you. So, um, and, and of course, it was in my desk. I never pulled it out, never did anything with it. But I found it after I was writing it. I was pushing around for a new book to write. And I found this kind of like, hurricane during the revolution. It sounds kind of dramatic, sounds interesting. I'm sure nobody's ever written about it. And, and I searched. and. One person had written an article. It was about four pages long in a seismology journal. Do you guys read seismology journals for fun? I do. Oh, yeah, it's a thing to do on a Friday night. So, yeah, very cool. Uh, actually, they actually had a copy of this journal at William & Mary Library. I could not believe my luck. I took it off the shelf, and, like, dust was flying everywhere and all that, like, you know, blowing it off like an Indiana Jones movie. And I, I found this thing, and I copied it, and... So, but nobody else has written anything else about it. It appears, because it's the second most deadliest hurricane ever to hit America or Canada, so a few people have written about it in, in general books on encyclopedias, but really nothing on it. So I, I did a little investigating for, for maybe a couple weeks and poked around some colonial newspapers and that kind of thing, and so I put together enough for like a little four or five page overview, and I started sending that out to publishers. It was just an idea I had. About three days later, I get an email from a publisher. Yeah, my eyebrows went up too. I was like, this is awesome. Uh, and they're like, what have you written? We love this idea. It sounds dramatic. If it's perfect, I was like, yes. They're like, what have you written? I told you, I haven't written a word yet. So they're like, we'll start writing. I was like, yes, I will. Nothing, <laughs> nothing quite encourages an aspiring writer, I'm here to tell you, than interest from a publisher. So I got to work fiercely. I mean, I. I actually have to uh, just brag a little bit. I mean, I remember the day, it was like December 28th of 2005. I was sitting down to write, uh, it might have been the 27th, I don't know. But it was over Christmas break. I was writing the chapter on Virginia. And I, I, I wrote the most, I, I wrote like 14 pages in one day. I literally like was writing from the moment I got up and like kids go away and all that. And to the minute I went to bed that night, late at night. And, it was a publishable quality. They really didn't edit it at all. I mean, I was just so excited and so focused and it was so exciting. Finished the manuscript, did all this teaching in about six to eight months or so. I mean, I was working on this every spare moment. So excited. And, you know, sending them, uh, sending them chapters. I'm so excited. Here it is. And it took 
publishers move at a glacial pace. It took at least 10 or 11 months to actually get the book contract, right? There was interest, but there was no book contract, okay? Uh, and that, that's a little de demoralizing, but they were interested and I, I sort of kept going on other projects. And I made a deal with my wife. I was like, look, if you go back to work, you know, my daughter was going to kindergarten. I can be a writer. She was, the look I got was not a very good one. And, you know, my daughter was going to kindergarten. I was like, our son is doing a little bit of time in preschool. I can do a little bit of writing for like two hours a day. And, and otherwise, I'll stay home with him and all that. And my wife was very skeptical, but eventually she very reluctantly agreed because she loved, loved being a stay-at-home mom and all that. And eventually she agreed. And I was a writer. I was like, wow. Uh, and so, uh, but again, they didn't contract the book till 2007. And I was like, well, when is it going to come out? I was so excited. And I got my whopping, I'll go ahead and tell you the amount, $3,000 advance, right? Split into two different checks. Don't spend it all in one place, okay? <laughs> all right, maybe you can get like three or four lattes at Starbucks for that much, but it wasn't a lot of money, right? But I was just so excited and got, had my check and we took a picture of me holding out my $1,500 check. I know it's pathetic, but <laughs> indulge me, okay? So, uh, so I started writing other books and they said, well, we want the book to come out during hurricane season. Like that seems kind of a catch to sell the book. But it'll be 2008. Well, I was like, ah, oh, another year gone by. Okay, so, so the book eventually came out. And I'm, I was going on to other ideas, other manuscripts, and you can't discuss book ideas because they're like, well, we have to see how this one sells first. We're not prepared to enter into any kind of, of, of discussions about another book yet because it's a business, really. Uh, and Hurricane of Independence came out, and it did well. It wasn't a bestseller. You might not have heard of it. Maybe you don't have a copy on your shelves yet. But, I, we are having a book signing, I don't know if the professor mentioned that. But, um, but, um, but it came out and it was successful. Do you know the average book sells about 500 copies? I bet you didn't know that. Do you know you can be a New York Times bestseller list for a couple of weeks? You would think millions of copies, right? Hundreds of thousands of copies. You can be on the New York Times bestseller list for a few weeks and maybe sell 15,000 copies of your book. And think about it, you're making about a buck fifty a book. And think about it, some writers spend four or five years writing a book. So do the math. Yeah, you can make more as a grocery store bagger, right? <laughs> I hope I haven't dissuaded anyone from becoming a writer. <laughs> Any aspiring writers out there? Sorry, okay. It's a great thing, right? You make a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, you know, I, I, I call it a sobering business. I mean, it's, it's just sobering the thing. Do you know 95% of America hasn't walked into a bookstore? in the last year? Yeah, that's, that's horrible to think of, right? You're, I mean, you're ensconced in the middle of learning and University of Virginia and Thomas Jefferson's statue is staring down at you every day. And you're like, wow, everybody reads books and is so intellectual. Yeah, 5% of America has, has got a book in the last year. It's, it's pretty bad. 